Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and to pro proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we in the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from Isaiah. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 27. Let us read it responsively by half verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? One thing have I asked the Lord, one thing I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord. And to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me safe in his shelter. 
He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling, and set me high upon the rock. Even now he lifts up my head. Above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing to make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me. And turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ may not be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, 
so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. <coughs> From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called to them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, let's take a closer look at the reading from 1 Corinthians, because it so speaks to our world and our culture. Everything old is new again, it seems, including, occasionally, bad behavior. Paul writes to the church that he founded in Corinth. He's gotten a message from Chloe's people that things have gotten ugly. That's not a surprise. Corinth was a busy seaport with all of the transient people <coughs> from different cities and countries and possibilities for misunderstandings and fights that you would expect at a busy seaport. If you ever get a chance to go to Corinth, go look at the ruins where Paul spoke. You can actually stand at the bima or the pulpit from whence he spoke. You can see from that elevated spot just above the ruins of the marketplace, the port itself. In the marketplace, Goods that had arrived by ship were sold there. The usual haggling and negotiations would have been happening. No doubt there were a few more lively interchanges. Paul knew what Corinth was about, and he also knew the culture of the place. It was rough, and it was sometimes nasty. So then he gets a letter saying, Help us, Paul. There are all sorts of quarrels and fights going on here. And I expect that he's not entirely surprised. Now, let me just say, Paul has a reputation for being a rather cranky person on occasion. And sometimes his responses to letters that have come his way are downright acerbic in tone. But here he does something different. He says, you know, I've been hearing there have been problems. You're arguing over something that is, in the end, irrelevant. It doesn't matter who converted you, whether it was me or other Christ followers who have come your way. The person, person affecting the conversion is nothing. It is the one to whom you turn as a result of that conversion. That one, Jesus Christ who is the important one. 
And when I did this among you, it wasn't about me. I don't try to change people's minds about Christ because I'm a slick public speaker, although for the record, Paul was a trained public speaker, an an orator of some note. Paul says, I let the gospel do the work of conversion. It is the gospel that turned your hearts. It is Christ's sacrificial death on the cross that converted you. And then he closes the missive by saying, you know, the rest of the world doesn't get what we have figured out. They hear Christ's story and it all seems a bunch of nonsense to them. Why follow somebody who was so weak that they got killed by the Romans? But we have learned the power of the cross. Focus on that. Paul is, first and foremost, a pastor. He knows the folks in the many places where he's created new groups of Christ followers. And he knows who the Corinthians are. He also knows that they don't need a rebuke from him because they're so used to rebukes that they just ignore them. Instead, they need a course correction. Look to Jesus, look to the cross, look to the love of God for the love of God. There was a meme, one of those clever pictures with words attached to them, making the rounds on the interwebs this past week, about the usual format of the beginning of letters written by Paul. Essentially, this is what it said. Grace to you. Hi. I thank God for you. Hold fast to the gospel. And for the love of everything holy, stop doing dumb things. By the way, Timothy says hi. Over and over again, we look at the beginning of Paul's letters, and that's what we see. Although... Paul's chastising of the Corinthians is the gentlest sort of rebuke. We know that Paul writes these letters in response to something from one of these places where he's founded a faith community. We have never seen the original letter that prompted the response. It would be fascinating to do so. If we could, it might help us understand Some of the inconsistencies in Paul's various letters, he writes to the context of the people that he's engaging with. But here's the thing that becomes clearer and clearer in each and every one of Paul's letters. Paul, the good pastor, just wants them to love one another as Jesus loves us all. He just wants them to keep on track with what he taught them. Fighting, trash-talking each other, doing bad things like having an affair with one's mother-in-law, not a recommended thing. All of those things fall into the general category of dumb things that they need to stop doing if they really want to follow Christ. It's that simple. There's a message there for us. This parish has come a long way towards healing. But we still have our little pockets of trash talk and of gossip, of sharing misinformation, and then refusing to own that we have done wrong in doing that. Unless we end those things, those last little pockets were not helping the healing. So let me paraphrase Paul here. Grace be upon you, beloveds. I thank God for you. Yes, I do, every single day. Hold fast to the gospel, which has some real clarity about what's good to do and what's not good to do. And for the love of this parish, for the love of each other, 
for the love of everything that is holy. Stop doing the things that would make Jesus and Paul say, you said what? Stop because it hurts us all. And then apologize to those who are hurt by your words or your actions. There's no justification for that. It's unhelpful, full stop. And Bishop Susan says, hi, she enjoyed her visit. We have made great progress here. And I'm so proud of the hard work that everybody has done in doing that work. And we've still got a little bit further to go. And we're human. And we make mistakes. Just as Peter and Andrew and James and John did, those simple fishermen called by Jesus to be apostles. They continued trying to do better throughout their lives as we should continue to try to do better because with God's help, we can do better. I know it is possible. So my challenge for you this week is to do a hard thing. Hard, but not impossible. I will never ask you to do something that is impossible. Go to one person that you have hurt in some way. It may be somebody from church or somebody else. We all have somebody whom we have offended at one time or another. Go to that person and don't try and give a good reason or a justification for what you said or what you did. Just say, I understand you were hurt by that thing I did and I'm sorry. If you're feeling really brave, you can say, what can I do to make things better between us? This work is a spiritual discipline. It's not just making nice, but it is getting right with Jesus at the same time. Spiritual disciplines take practice And I know from personal experience, the first time may be very difficult to do. The next time will be less difficult. And this parish and the whole world as a whole will be better because of it. Think of the world that we live in now. If everyone who had offended in this way, went to the person they offended and said, I'm sorry. I think something I said hurt you. Something I did hurt you. I'm so sorry. What can I do to make it better? What a different world it would be. The thing that will propel us toward this is gratitude for the love of Christ who loves us even though we do that stuff. And we all do every now and again. And in our gratitude, we pray. Because prayer helps us through things that are hard. And so let us pray today. Dear Lord, we sometimes fall prey to actions and words that are harmful. You who suffered so mightily for us, grieve our words and our actions. You who love us so deeply, encourage us to do better. Give us the strength to do the work of healing and amendment of our lives. Teach us the power of I'm sorry. Let us feel your love as we learn to love each other more deeply and more fully. Help us be brave in doing the right thing for your sake and for the sake of your people as we promised at our baptism. Lord, let us be instruments of your grace. Amen.
now let us stand in body or in spirit as we reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Standing or kneeling, let us pray. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, especially the Hall, Fowler, Hallman, and Hartman families, families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. The victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially those who are in need of God's healing grace, Kim, Sydney, Texie, Nick, Sam, Matthew, Jim, Tim, Helen, Henry, Shelley, Miriam, Tim, Bill, David, and Tyler. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Larry Tucker, in whose memory the altar flowers have been given by his family, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put your trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father 
in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done, left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, in the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now please stand in body and spirit for the peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet each other with words and signs of peace. Please be seated for a few brief announcements. You all get special Jesus points today for coming out on a gray and rainy day. We have had several Sundays where there's been lots of activity, the wonderful lessons in carol service, the confirmation last week with Bishop Haynes, and it's natural that there'd be a little letdown. The weather didn't help us, so. I am so grateful for all of you who are here today to celebrate the fact that we are here and Jesus is with us in all that we do. We had a great vestry meeting this past week. I wrote about it in the Thank God on Friday. These vestry meetings are as much spiritual as they are temporal, and we are so grateful for the folks who are on our vestry, for all those who came to support the work one who is specially named Jimmy Thacker, who has re retired from his work running the oversight of the endowment program. Boston Lackey has stepped in to do that work, and he has passed along the mantle of source of all information about the endowment, and he has resigned his work on the finance committee after many, 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 many years. So we are so grateful to you, Jimmy, for your ministry among us. So, yay, Jimmy. <laughs> we are grateful, too, for the opportunity to celebrate things like confirmation. Everybody who worked so hard to make last Sunday so special not only for Susan, who was confirmed, and our friend, Dr. Cheryl Talley from St. Stephen's, who was confirmed, but all of us who were lifted up by the presence of the bishop, Tim, the choir, the altar guild, there were some curveballs thrown at us because, number one, we didn't know she was going to bring a deacon with her, so all the people who normally do the things they normally do were not in their normal position, and yet, it still worked. Some of the flow of things did not work as smoothly as we could because the normal eye signals that we do were not able to be done. And yet, it still worked. And it was beautiful. And the bishop was so delighted to be with you, to have the, the bishop's question hour. And it was great fun. Lots of different topics covered. I think she was deeply impressed with your care for this parish, your hopes for the future, your willingness to engage complicated issues with grace, and your love of God, because it was evident through all of that. So thank you for the hard work and for the beautiful work of last week and for the celebration that it was for everyone. And now the work continues, the work of being the church in every possible way. One of the ways that we are the church is in our fellowship, so immediately after the service, as per usual, there are goodies awaiting us in Lockheed Hall, so please do come visit us and join us for uh, goodies, but also for the wonderful conversation. 
wanted to pass along one lovely little bit of news. As you know, the Simpsons, both Ted and Marion, have had different medical problems in the past couple months that really spiked to the point where both of them were over at the hospital, same hospital, two different floors. They are now at a nursing facility as they continue their rehab, and they are sharing a room. I saw a delightful picture of the two of them uh, together in the same room, which brings me great joy because I know they were worried about each other and we are hopeful that they will continue their healing and that they'll be back home soon. Keep them in your prayers. Keep all who are sick in your prayers. Because of Ted's inability to get in and out of bed, they have a first floor bedroom that is completely set up for him. And since he has suffered and had to be in that bedroom, they haven't been in the same room for 12 years. So now they get to find out how much each other's snoring has progressed over that past 12 years. So we keep them in our prayers for that adjustment as well. But we are so delighted that they're doing better. And uh, I think they're in a place up in Mechanicsville, and I intend to go there after church today to pay a visit to them. It's going to be fun to have them together. Now comes the time when we give back to God, all that God has given us. We have so much to be grateful to God for. We can't repay him, but we can give back in the form of supporting the work of this congregation, which does so much important work outside these walls as well as within them. So now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, You have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember remember his his death, death, we we proclaim proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and love and strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.